Chateau du Cam, you know this chateau is an amazing chateau. Uh, and the story of this chateau is a story of the Lursalus family since four, 400 years. I think this family maintains the excellence in a time. I think it's an amazing wine because you have on the top of the appellation, you are only the Cru Classé Supérieur of the 1855 classification. And on the top of the hill, you see in the north, you have the large valley of the Garonne Valley. In south, you have the large forest of the land forest, you are just in the middle. And in west, you have the little river across the river Garonne. When, when you come in September, in morning, you have the foggy situation with a lot of mist, a lot of humidity. In afternoon, the as wind drives the grapes, the alternance between humidity in morning, dryness, and are very interesting for the development of the fungus and the noble roots arrive around the skin. It concerns the flavor, it concerns the sugar. It can is a word of the complexity. Thank you for that introduction. Um, you touched very briefly on the Lursalus family. Can you tell us just I know the, the history in Sauternes is, is very rich, and especially at Chateau Iquem, but can you give us kind of the quick version of the history of how Chateau Iquem came to be? Uh, the story of Chateau Iquem, uh, I think, is uh, just in the middle of the story. Just beside me, I have the very nice letter. This, this letter says, uh, Monsieur le Comte, this is man, uh, speak about the Comte of Lursalus. Monsieur le Comte, uh, I stay in your home, in your chateau. It's a amazing chateau, it's a amazing landscape. I taste your wine, it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful wine. I'm very happy it's possible to brought a few bottles of this wine, for example, 300 bottles, because um, I am very happy to share this bottle with my good friend, George Washington. I think this later is the letter of uh, Thomas Jefferson, the ambassador of the Tasman. But as a letter of Thomas Jefferson, I think you have the middle of the story. In, in Chateau de Cam, have a, a very nice decanter of the Romanov family with a, an eagle with two heads. And uh, is a, this decanter is a Baccarat decanter. And uh, I think it's an amazing piece uh, to, to, to introduce the, wine, the color of the wine. Because Chateau de Cam, is a is a missing color. You see the evolution of the color. You have the golden gold color, the amber color, and also the mahogany color. It's so very elegant to travel in a time with Chateau de because it's a fantastic aging wine. It is. It's it's a wine that uh, if you get a chance to hang on to it for a while, it can really be beautiful years and years and years later. Um, so I, I know I put this letter up. This is the letter. It's from Thomas Jefferson. Um, and I, it's very, it's impossible to read unless you have some, uh, some, uh, a, a microscope, I think. Um, but if anyone's interested in this letter, I, I do have a copy of the picture. Um, Pierre, can you, can you speak to us a little bit about, so town is such a unique area. Um, not only in Bordeaux, but in the rest of the world. Can you talk to us a little bit about how um, Sauternes is so unique and specific and how you are able to make these beautiful wines? Sauternes is, uh, is a little appellation of average 2,000 hectares. You have two parts. You have the part is Sauternes and the another part is Barsac. And the terroir is, uh, is different in Sauterne. And the terroir is uh, quite an age, the, the river origin terroir. It requires a lot of stone. It's a Pyrenees stone, because the origin of the stone is a Pyrenees stone. It's a mosaic of the different sediment. You mix gravel, uh, eels of, uh, of clay and uh, sand. But the second part of this appellation is Barsac. You have uh, is a shell sedimentation of the tertiary age, is uh, all the part. 
I think the chalk also is very interesting to make the so very elegant wine with a lot of finesse and freshness. So term and Ikem, Ikem is um, is a very lucky um, wine because Ikem you have a mix of of the tertiary age of the just a little uh, part of the chalk around the around the chateau. And also you have the large part of clay and uh, you have the, 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 the clay and sand and gravel. So Chateau d'Ikem, you mixed quaternaire and tertiaire. But also is 104 hectares around the chateau. is a very big size with a lot of hill. You have a lot of sensuality in, in, a, in the landscape of, of Chateau d'Ikem. And also is a, is a word of the complexity because just in front of the east, behind the east, or on the top of the east, we have not the same situation for the development of the boat ties of the noble roads. The situation in, on the top of the east. Why Ikem is um, easy Ikem? Because the reputation of this wine is a amazing reputation around the world. Ikem, I think you have the diversity of the terroir, is a large estate, and also, you are on the top of the hill, you have the, just a little uh, early terroir. It's, it's possible to have the early picking, and you pick a very large part of the very fruity uh, part. And also, and the secret of Chateau de Quai is the experience, elegance du geste. Sorry, I speak uh, just a little French. Um, I think it's a... Um, is a good symbiosis between the people who work in Chateau d'Ikem uh, with the terroir. And when the people have the, a very nice experience, it's possible to play with a risk. I think play with a risk in Sauternes is, is, um, is very important. The man pass the mirror of the wrist to sublime the raw material of Chateau d'Ikem. If you have the good weather, I think it's easy. It's possible you have not a good appointment with the clima. You have a lot of rain, and the rain fights the roads. You don't produce wine. Because besides the label of Shadow Decam is a word of excellence. And so to that point, um, Chateau Ikem does not make a Grand Vin necessarily every year if the weather conditions don't allow for it. What was the last vintage uh, that you had to skip at Chateau Iken? And I remember in the 2012. And the 2012, I have not the solution to organize and uh, with the diversity of the terroir of Chateau Iken. And my team and me, um, and Mr. Bernardo, owner of Chateau d'Ikem, takes the decision, like a family Lursalus takes the decision before, uh, with the 64, 2002, you have a lot of vintage where you are not Ikem. If you have the bottle of 64, I suppose is a fake. I think it's <laughs> a wine. But it's a great decision. It's a difficult decision. But it's a fantastic quality decision. Because an Ikem is Ikem, is a voluptuous wine, is a very long aftertaste, is a fantastic aging wine. I think the touch of the tannin is like the touch of the cashmere wine and the cashmere structure. I think I love the cashmere because the cashmere is elegance in a time, it's a real definition of the great wine. I agree. Um, can you, uh, so that being said, everyone tuning in here, uh, every vintage of Ikem that you will taste will be a great vintage. There will just be variation depending on, you know, what happened that year in the vineyards, what the weather was like. Um, but you can be sure that any bottle of Ikem will be, will be a great one. Um, Pierre, in, in the vineyards, you have I'm assuming Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon planted. How do you um, decide what the blend is? Is there typically a, a set blend or does it depend vintage to vintage? 
what's um how do you decide with the cephage i think in chateau de cam as proportion of fertility you have the large proportion of the million because you have 80% of the million and 20% of sauvignon i think and the the the, the blend the decision of the blend is the first decision is to keep the fresh I think in in Sauterne is very dangerous to play with the beer because it's very important to play with the freshness and to have the good balance between the fresh and the beer because I think it's very important to make the very digest wine and the 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 assemblage is a I love the vintage where you have the very large picking. Because when you start the picking in the middle of September, you finish the picking, uh, you, you continue the picking at the end of September, middle of October, able to finish the picking at the end of November. The best vintage for me when, when you kiss all the complexity of the ecosystem of Chateau de Cannes, because it's possible to have 40 days of different picking of different day of Chateau de Cannes. You play with the complexity to, to make the synergy. You play with the freshness. You don't play with the sugar. I think it's a real solution to make the very digest wine. It's more easy to associate with the food. I think the blend of Chateau de Cam is not, is not an easy blend, but you play with the, the diversity of the terroir. You play with the diversity of the different days. You play with the diversity of the Botra tax and also even in Bordeaux it's possible to have Indian summer in Bordeaux the late picking like 67 37 is a very late picking to make the very outstanding one wonderful and um Pierre can you can you tell us briefly the story of how Sotern was discovered i know there's a couple different stories out there, but it, it certainly was a wine region and still is today that's known for the red wines. How was Sauterne, how did it come to be what it is today? I think Sauterne, uh, I have the amazing story of this appellation Sauterne. When you travel in, a, in, a, in the middle of the landscape, you have the amazing chateau, amazing castle, and the, the wall in the middle of the vineyard. I think this region is so very elegant. I suppose in the middle of the 19th century, in the 18th century, this, this region is very rich. And when you compare the price with the red wine, like the first grow of 1855 classification, I think uh, Sotern and Ikem have the double price. But actually, uh, is a fashion wine. You have the, actually, you have a lot of investment of the lot of neighbor, have a lot of ID to, um, for Sotern. I think you have the lot of emulation. I think it's not the name emulation, it's a French name, but uh, in Sotern, a lot of experience. And I am sure, I think this wine of Sotern it's difficult to compare. It's not an easy wine. It's not easy to make this wine because if I compare with the red wine, I suppose to make the Sauternes wine. But it's an evidence. It's not complicated to understand and when you drink a wine of Sauternes. It's like a sweet and uh, it's very easy to associate this wine with the food. Because, uh, and I think you have a lot of idea. For the aperitif, the young vintage, a cool temperature is the right moment for the aperitif. And the traditional dish in, in the land forest is a chicken with palm fries and ikem or the other sauteen. Conte cheese, blue cheese, sweet bread. And you have a, also Morocco dish with a tagine. You have the fantastic association with alone with a cigar in the middle of the night, it's possible to continue <laughs> and to drink the Sauternes wine. I think 
is a is a pity because the people say oh, when you have the, your birthday you open the bottle of Chateau Yquem. Okay. When you have the Christmas with uh, your family, I think it's the best moment to open the bottle of Yquem. Okay. But also <laughs> when you have, uh, every day is, I think is also the good moment to open a bottle of Sauterne or to open a bottle of Chateau Yquem. I think because at, I have this experience because I'm a very lucky man to, to have the possibility to test uh, perhaps every day this wine. But the people say it's possible to drink with foie gras. Yes, okay, it's not a problem. But for me, it's not a dessert wine. Because the dessert wine is a competition between the sugar and the dessert and sugar of Chateau d'Ikem. Ikem is a dessert. Alone, Ikem is a dessert. And I am very excited by uh, to run this chateau because it's a, um, the uh, light towers of the appellation. But also I am very exciting because we have a lot of vibration in this appellation certain. A lot of vibration around. I am actually the one of Sautern and the one of Ikem are not very expensive if you compare with the uh, other wine of the red wine. But in the future, I suppose, I think this wine will have a lot of success. Like in 18th century, like in 18th century, is the pleasure of a lot of people to drink certain wine. I am very enthusiastic and optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I see that. No, it's great. Well, on, on the subject, that was a question that I had for you a little bit later. On the subject of pairings, I agree with you. I think, you know, Sauterne and Ikem can compete a lot with a, with a sweet uh, dessert. What um, you mentioned in the area, it's very common to have Sauterne with kind of the Sunday chicken with, with potatoes, with fries. What other pairings can you obviously it depends on the, the vintage um what but what other pairings can you recommend to people to kind of think outside the box when it comes to uh pairing ecam with different dishes because in the u.s it's it's typical that we see sauterne paired on desserts so what other pairings can you propose if the dessert, all depend on the dessert. If you have the mango fruit and you have pineapple fruit, uh, just with Ikem, uh, with Sauterne, it's not a problem. I think you have the nice association. And also, and uh, with a dry apricot. And the apple pie with a uh, I think with Ikem also is nice. If you have not just a piece of sugar, just. With uh, ice, it's difficult, ice cream. It's difficult because in general, the ice cream have a lot of sugar. I like have a very dangerous competition. But me, yes, buy the glass. Just, I have the very nice experience by the glass uh, and uh, in the restaurant, for example, and you, you, op you have the big bottle of Chateau d'Ic, big bottle of uh, Jeroboam Imperial. You observe the color of this wine. And after, you just off one glass of this wine for the different people by the glass. And you, and you arrive and you open the universe of this great wine of Chateau d'Ic, just one big glass. And I love to start with aperitif and uh, aperitif of uh, Chateau d'Ikem. But the people in general are very afraid because after it's difficult to test the red wine after the sweet wine. Yes, but I think you make a little consommé, a little bouillon to clean your mouth and after it's very easy to recommence with red wine. It's not the difficulty because Ikem is not very rich because the choice of the blend is, uh, is, is, is not uh, the sugar, you, you know my explanation. And it's not rich, you have not... Uh, Ikem is very easy to, 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 to mix with um, different food. I explained uh, and I have a Morocco dish, I think it's a Morocco dish, you mix salt, 
different. The Asia dish also with just a little spicy dish, fantastic with Chateau d'Iquem. The South American also cooking is fantastic. And also the American cooking, traditional, the braai and, uh, and, and uh, white meat. And white, red meat is more difficult. It's better for Cheval Blanc. But I think, and um, uh, game, game also is a nice, the game. And the Lièvre à la Royale. Le Lièvre à la Royale is a big rabbit. The Lièvre à la Royale. With the vintage 89 Chateau d'Iquem, I remember this association is a great uh, restaurant in Paris, is Guy Savoy. Guy Savoy is a great ambassador of Chateau d'Iquem. He said, Pierre, you try the Lièvre à la Royale with Chateau d'Iquem. It's an amazing association. I think it's, a, it's very important that people take one glass of Chateau d'Iquem. I think after, because even half the neighbor just around me say, oh, I, I don't love the sweet wine and it's difficult for me, etc. I should taste the wine. Taste the wine. And after, you give your impression. And the people, just after to taste the wine, say, wow, what is this? Is this is the word of Chateau d'Iquem. It's a very special word. It's not every wine. I think it's a... It's very natural, it's not complicated. I think Easy Cam, Easy Cam is amazing wine. And um, I am very happy when I share this bottle of Chateau de Cam. A lot of people also, they say if you have to present a gift, a gift of bottle of Chateau de Cam to share with a good friend, I think is a amazing gift. But when you arrive in your cellar, you show the bottle of wine, you say, is my bottle of Iken. But if you don't open the bottle, you see only the color, I think it's not a good solution. I think it's very important to open the bottle of Sotem, to open the bottle of Iken. I is agree. It... So ev everyone listening in here today, go get a bottle of Iken and we'll, we'll all, all virtually cheers. <laughs> People are... Um, very enthusiastic, like me. You see me, I have 60, 65 years. I drink every day the Chateau d'Iquem. You see me, I am very enthusiastic. Quel bonheur. <laughs> so that's, that's the key to long, a long life, a long it's healthy life. <laughs> um, Pierre, we had a, a question come through on the aging process for Chateau d'Iquem. Uh, what what is the barrel treatment? How long does the wine age in barrel? And um, how, how do you handle the aging process? In barracks, oh yes, in barrels. And in barrels and the normal maturation all depend on the vintage, but the normal maturation is between 24 and 30 months is just uh, is enough. If you have the very strong vintage, so people uh, have a long maturation. But uh, is the most important thing is the picking. Because the tree is very important to pick a raw material very clean, very pure. Because there's a complication is you have the botrytis, the nub spot, you have uh, um, uh, other botrytis. It's very important to have the quality pickers to pick the right at the right moment. It's very important to have the pure diamond, diamond, a very, comment dire, clear, very pure in your cellar. And after, and uh, the aging of this wine is amazing. Also, it's very important thing. When you open a bottle of wine, you open your bottle of chicken, you are only two, don't you? Yes, you take just one glass or two glass. But you put your bottle in the fridge. It's possible to retest the wine after four days and five days. You have no evolution of the wine. I think it's so very important to explain because, and also when you open a young bottle, a teenager bottle, and the old bottle of Chateau d'Iquem, 
it's very important to see like a certain the evolution of the color and the evolution of a color is amazing evolution but also i am lucky because i am the little experience to test the vintage of the 19th century and for example 93 and the 93 the picking is at the end of august in the 31 of august start the picking of 93 it's very early picking but the wine is still very fresh I think it's a fantastic aging wine. It's so very elegant to travel in a time when you test a bottle of Chateau d'Iquet. Indeed. Um, if any of you have not been on uh, the website, Chateau d'Iquet's website, there's a great page that shows all of the bottles uh, with the color. And I think it's really interesting to see that not necessarily the older vintages all have that amber colors. It really, it really depends from vintage to vintage. Um, so I, I definitely recommend you guys check that out. Um, Pierre, one last question before we have to wrap up here. Um, are there any projects coming up at Chateau Ikem? Any, um, any, uh, anything on the horizon? Anything? Of course, things are always changing. Things are always evolving. But is there anything uh, happening at the property that you can share with us? Yes. I have uh, actually, um, I have, the, you know, just around me, I have a fantastic team, like uh, Sandrine Garba is a cellar master, and a very important woman in, uh, in Chateau d'Iquet. And also, uh, you have um, uh, a new generation also, and uh, with uh, Lorenzo Pasquini. Actually, Lorenzo worked with... Uh, the old technical manager, uh, Francis Mayer, the memory of the chateau is very important. And uh, have a lot of people very, uh, with a young generation with a new idea about Chateau d'Iquem. The first, I think, with the COVID, I, st I don't travel a lot. I stay in a chateau. I think it's very easy to have an invitation just on the top of the colline, in the middle of the chateau, to organize with a very nice chef, because I have a very great chef, he's a three-star chef for me, he's a, uh, in Chateau d'Iquem, to organize a little lunch, a little dinner, to understand the association between the food and the wine. But it's not very important to have missing it's not important to have the company. It's very evident to, to, to test a wine with a very simple food. Also, it's very interesting. And also, and I have, a, have the decision to travel around the world when I have the time to travel, to, to come and introduce and the, 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 the world of Chateau d'Iquem at the different part of the world. But the best moment, when you have the sunrise or the sunshine, and because the, the, the luz is the best moment for Chateau d'Iquem, because the lumière of Chateau d'Iquem, and when you test also at the different part of the chateau, and you test in the middle of the landscape with the sunshine, or the sunrise of Chateau d'Iquem is a great moment to organize. It's possible to stay uh, in a chateau and also, and uh, the by the glass is a great idea for Chateau d'Iquem around the world. And a lot of restaurants are very exciting to have the experience of the by the glass. I think you have a lot of experience, a lot of idea around Chateau d'Iquem because Iquem is very traditional wine is also the very contemporary wine. I think Ikem is very contemporary wine. And Ikem across the time, across the fashion, Ikem is Ikem. And there you have it. So all 70 of us tuning in here will show up at Chateau Ikem for, for a glass at, uh, at sunrise or sunset. That sounds lovely. Um, 
Pierre, thank you so much for uh, taking the time. I know you're a very busy person running Chateau Iquem as well as Chateau Cheval Blanc. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. And uh, we're, we're honored to be able to represent these wines in the U.S. and to sell them and to get them into the hands of, uh, of lucky, uh, lucky customers to, that can drink this. Beautiful wine. So thank you so much. Uh, we hope to see you over here someday soon. And if not, we'll, uh, we'll come say hello in Bordeaux at some point when we can get over there. Um, thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to share this moment with you and your whole family. <laughs>